The Convair team projected one mission in the 70s, six between 1985 and 2000 for the most conservative estimates. The intermediate plan saw three missions in the 70s and 12 by 2000, and the most ambitious plans, hold on to your helmets, saw six missions in the 70s and 22 by the year 2000. Man, doesn't that make you sad already? The fact that we didn't get one other mission beyond the moon's orbit in that entire time? These missions would have been spread over various planetary bodies depending on the suitable time frames and how the different planets eventually lined up. For example, Uranus and Neptune would have been visited from the Jupiter base or by using the gas giant's gravitational pull as a gravity assist. So let's break that down exactly where and when we would have gone. For the conservative missions, there would be a powered flyby of Mars by 1974, an orbit of Venus and Mars by 1984 and 85 respectively, and a proposed quick trip to Mercury in the same year, either by a robot or man. There would be a surface mission to Mars by 1994, and a manned mission to Jupiter by the eve of 2000. For the intermediate mission, given a bit more cash, in addition to the previous plans, they would also do a flyby mission to Venus, a Mars landing by 1982 instead of 1994, and a flyby of Jupiter by 1987. There would be a longer term base built on Mars in 1993, and a short-term base on Jupiter, specifically the moon Callisto, in 1996. The most ambitious goals saw them travelling much the same in the 70s, but it's the 1980s where it gets totally wild. There would be a Mars base established by 1986 with a flyby of Jupiter the very same year. Then in 1990, there would be a short landing in Jupiter with a further flyby mission to Uranus and Neptune. They would also build a permanent moon base on Callisto in Jupiter and landing on Titan in Saturn by the edge of 2000. This makes the book 2001 A Space Odyssey not even science fiction, as humanity would have beaten its own timeline. Bonkers.